go. Perfect. Just so you know, um, whenever you do come into one of these meetings, you're probably automatically going to be muted and automatically your video is going to be turned off. So in the bottom left hand corner, you can manage that with the little microphone and the little video camera. Just click that and then we'll be able to see you. So my goal is always for you to, my goal for these trainings is always to be 30 minutes or less, right? I love to teach. This is honestly the, the reason that I'm still doing this business to this day. Um, well, of course, the financial stuff, but the part that I really enjoy and love is the teaching part of it. And um, I love the whole idea of small businesses, et cetera. Tonight, I'm going to talk about something that might, well, let's, let's just get into some of the material and then, and then we'll, we'll come back to that. We're going to talk about a few things. Number one, the law of cause and effect. Okay. So, um, I have been preparing for this for a couple of weeks. I'm not kidding you. Um, because I take our trainings very seriously when I do lead. Um, I want you to walk away with usable content, something that you're going to remember. I want you to have the information that you need in order to take your business to the next step. Um, and I think it's beautiful that Jake went last week because some of the stuff that I'm going to talk about tonight is going to play perfectly along with what he did. So thank you so much for that. The law of cause and effect means basically that for every thing that happens, there is a reaction, right? So something happens, then there's a reaction. There is a cause of that one thing. So keeping that in mind, I want you to know that success is not an accident and neither is failure. Okay. So success and failure, those things are not accidents. In fact, success is 100% predictable. It's predictable. So um, here's a quote that I just picked up from this book that I'm reading right now that I've been studying for this call. It says, if you do what other successful people do over and over again, nothing can stop you from getting the same results that they get. If you don't, then nothing is going to help you. So I love Ryan Tracy. He's so old school and um, he's just a cute little old man. Um, and he, I've read so many of his books and that is so true, right? So if you just do the right things, sometimes it's, it's just a matter of just doing the right things. And you know that you're going to get the same result that other people got. Um, but if you don't do those things that you can't get the same result, right? Cause this whole thing about the law of cause and effect. Now close your eyes for a second. And I want to prepare you, take a deep breath, exhale. Tonight I'm going to talk to you about sales. You can open your eyes now. So if your stomach just dropped, if you were like, oh God, no Holly, I don't want to be a salesperson. The whole reason I'm in this beach body business is because I don't want to be a salesperson. I would agree with you. I don't think that you should necessarily feel like a salesperson or at least not what our perception of sales has been in the past. Um, in fact, in, you know, in this book, one of the, one of the four, a leader from a fortune 500 company even stated that sales was the sleazy side of this company. And I think that that's how we used to think about sales, right? We think of a car salesman, you think of the person that as soon as you walk into a, a shop, they're approaching you, they're down your throat. It's like, you can't even browse, right? That's what we think of sales. So I want to take you into a mind shift. And um, luckily, our, our economy is changing and our world is changing. People are starting to realize what sales really should be. And that's why the social experience is so incredibly important is because we know that in order for our business to really, really excel, we have to not be like normal salespeople. So I'm, I'm going to challenge you to a mind shift right now. Um, some of the stuff I read is so, so just so exciting. I want you to be proud that you are a sales professional. And if you're still in the back of your mind saying, I'm not in sales, Holly, I'm in the business of inviting and sharing. Yes, I get that. But hang in there with me. Salespeople are the backbone of our entire society, of our country. Okay. Think about that for a second. Everything is built, created, service provided, everything because something was bought. You won't, you, you won't have a house. You won't have water. You won't have all everything. Our entire society is built upon sales, but it's how we approach it, right? Um, so sales used to be sleazy, but now I want you to take comfort in the fact that you are in an industry that is rising above. 
75%, almost 75% of self-made millionaires are entrepreneurs. Just think about that for a second. 75% of self-made millionaires are entrepreneurs. Now an entrepreneur, by definition, it's somebody who has a business. What business can you think of in your mind that has no transaction of money and or product or service? There is no business like that. Even nonprofits, they can't function without collecting donations. So I want you to take, I want you to be proud of that. Okay, so 75% of self-made millionaires are entrepreneurs and they are selling, then there is an opportunity for us to proclaim that as well. Okay, so be proud. Be proud because you are in a, um, you're in a, a position that has the highest guaranteed income. Well, not guaranteed income, but the highest income potential, I should say. Job security. You have a tremendous amount of job security. If you can... If you can really get good at sales and just when I say sales, I know I just, I want you to kind of brush off any negative feelings that you might have for now and just hear me out because this is how I felt for a really long time. I was like, Oh, I don't want to be in sales. But then I found myself um, selling fitness certifications and it, but it was, I was just me like being excited and getting people to come to my certifications. And then, and then I was at the certifications and I was selling our product, but it was just me like wearing the cute clothes and talking about the previous rounds. So it didn't feel like sales and that's, that's how it should feel to you. But at the, at the base of everything, I want you to know that no business survives without it. Right. Even if you're in a relationship, you sold that person on the fact that you are a great person to be in a relationship with, or you have a best friend, or whatever the case may be, right? Because there's a certain, there is something about this concept that I need us to fully grasp and not be scared of. So you can have higher income, you can have better job security in any economy. If you got really good at sales and say Beachbody went under tomorrow, but you, you're really good at what you're doing already, you could literally go and get, you could start this with any other company or you could go and get a high paid sales position at a different company, right? You can literally accomplish any financial goal. And the cool thing is, it is all 100% learned. It's all learned activity. So you're not born with it. You don't have it. Nobody really has an edge. It's all 100% learned. That is really cool because the top 10% of the salespeople in the world, they all started at the top, at the bottom percent, the bottom 10, right? So nobody starts at the top. That's what's so cool about Beachbody is like every single month, we all come back to zero on our success club points. We all get to like prove ourselves once again. I love that. I also love the fact that anybody coming from any walk of life can prove themselves. They, have, they don't have to have any type of background. They can differentiate themselves and create a, a dream life just from starting from zero. So it's all, here is the key though. And I don't want you to miss this. The difference is it's all mental. Like it's all in your mind. It is all in your mind. If you build a deep foundation, a strong foundation, of skills, then you will have a stronger house. You're going to have a stronger business, right? So it's all learned, it's not talent, it doesn't rely on talent, and no one is better or smarter than you are. I want you to remember that as we go through this, as we go through this um, talk tonight. So if it's all in our mind, then what does that have to do with? Okay, so first and foremost, primarily, it has to do with your self-concept, your self-concept, okay? So how you think, think about yourself. It all comes down to, and I hope that you're taking feverish notes. I hope that you come back and you, you revisit this bit. I can't speak. I can't speak after like two o'clock. You guys, if you don't know me, <laughs> I'm like an early, I'm an early bird. And then my brain cells start to like gradually die throughout the day. Um, but we are all composed of a bundle of beliefs about ourselves. Okay. We all have these little teeny tiny beliefs about ourselves. In fact, right now I'm in EMDR therapy because I wanted to break through to what I feel like is going to be the next level in my business. And I, and there's also some, some relationship stuff with my kids that I, that I really want to make sure that I get a good, a good grip on. And, um, you know, what, what is so interesting is because sometimes I'll go throughout the day and I'll snap or I'll have like this negative reaction or I'll have this negative thought. 
And I'm like, huh, now I find it so interesting because now I'm like, I wonder where that belief comes from. And so whether or not you're, you're consciously aware of these negative beliefs or not, we have them. We have these little self-fulfilling prophecies that run through our subconscious mind without even realizing it. And sometimes they're the gifts of our parents. Sometimes they're the gifts of some random event that happened when we were a kid. Sometimes it's, a, it's something from a trauma. Whatever the case may be, our job is to figure out ourselves first and foremost. So you are a bundle of beliefs. Good or bad, you have them. Um, so I just, I want you to know that we are always going to perform on the outside how we feel about ourselves on the inside. So the work usually starts inside here. It's inner programming. And within our entire self-concepts, like how we think about ourselves in general, um, you know, like even though like I can mentally say like, I know that I'm a good person. I know that I'm a nice person. I know that I am successful and I've achieved this level of success. Every now and again, I have those weird little negative beliefs that pop up that tell me I'm mean, that I am, you know, all these, these crazy little things that pop up. It's like, where did that come from? Well, it's from something that I, I haven't fully processed, probably from my past. And that's what I'm starting to learn to work through. But I know that the more I attack these little tiny negative beliefs head on, the farther I get. So here's an example. I reached a point, um, I would say I was about like three years, four years maybe into my business. And um, I was just really stuck. I was super duper stuck. And um, I just felt like, it was no use even sharing the business with anybody because um, they weren't going to do what I said anyways. And honestly, after going through EMDR therapy and working through that, it had nothing to do with anyone else. It was 100% because I had trust issues from some other things that happened in my past and growing up. And so once I processed those things, I was able to start looking at people in a positive light and I was able to start trusting people. I just had some trust things that I needed to work through and somehow I was being triggered in some way, shape or form. So we have this inner programming. Everybody has it. Okay. So whether you say, no, 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 I'm a positive person. I always think on the bright side, et cetera. We all have these moments. We all have these things that happen to us. So here's the thing. Within our general self-concept, we also have mini self-concepts. And these mini self-concepts kind of drive how well we do with our health, with our fitness, with our business, with anything else, with our relationship. Because we develop over time these little concepts about how we believe that we operate within the world. And the, the cool thing is we can change any of them, okay? But I want to focus on one that's specific. I want to focus on your self-concept about your level of income. Because you do. You have a self-concept that 100% defines your level of income. Oh, looks like some people are having a hard time joining. Yeah, you know what? I found that the, the link, hold on, let's pause for a sec. I'm just going to tell her to click the link. Because you know when I went when I went to start this recording or when I went to start this for some reason there weren't enough meetings scheduled so um, I wasn't able to do that I just clicked the link um, in the team to finances uh, banner sorry let me just reply that's Cam I want to get back to her in case her her team is messaging her as well normally I have my phone off I'm actually kind of glad that I didn't um, so hopefully they're they'll be able to just join via the link okay. So we have these little mini self-concepts and one of these self-concepts has to do with money, right? So we, in some way, shape or form, have um, some type of ceiling and no matter what we do, unless we start to improve upon our self-concept, we can't, honestly, you can't really earn 10% more or 10% less than what your self-concept about money, your income earning, what you believe you are capable of doing will allow you to do. Um, in fact, if you earn way more than that, it's going to like burn a hole in your pocket and you're going to start feeling guilty. And it's like, you're going to look for any, any way that you can possibly give it away. In fact, I did that. I think the first couple of years of my business, I was just like, Oh my God, I don't know what to do with a one year Brett and Shalene. They gave me like such a huge bonus. I didn't know what to do with it. So literally I just wrote checks to all my family. Cause I, I didn't feel like I was deserving of it. I was like, I just have to give it all away. I can't keep this money because it was, again, one of those things, right? So interesting. So we need to make a change. We need to make a mental shift. Achieve the goal in your mind 
first. Okay, this is a lot of stuff. This is a lot of information, I, and I still have a couple pages to go. You got to achieve the goal in your mind first. A lot of this has to do with visualization. A lot of this acts to do with acting as if. A lot of this has to do with positive affirmations. I am a millionaire. I make two million dollars a year. I am debt free. I I pay off three hundred dollars a month in credit card debt. Okay, whatever it is for you, act as if, and then you're going to start creating this new self concept about yourself. You have to break free from the past. I thought that I needed to blood, sweat, and tears for every single penny that I earned. I had a really hard time accepting that I was making thousands of dollars a week. And I didn't feel like I did that much, like only working 10 or 15, maybe 20 hours a week. Like that, that made no sense to me. Like that's not the way I grew up. I had to learn how to break free from the past, but also at the same time, it's not like, okay, so here's a, I want you to be a realistic. Now I'm not saying be a real, realistic so your feelings don't get hurt. You don't hit your goal. I'm not saying like reach as just as far as you know you can actually do. I'm saying like reach outside of your comfort zone. So if right now you're making say, I don't know, $20,000 a year in your beach body business or even half of that. If you're like, okay, if I can make an extra 25% on that or an extra 50% on that this year, and that's, that's where you start acting as if. Okay, so it's realistic, but it's not completely outside your reach. I remember I went to a conference once and, um, like I was like, oh, okay, you know, I want you to think outside the box and reach as big as you, as you wanted to. And how many, how much can you make this year? And so at the time I was like, oh, like two, probably like $200,000 a year. You know, that was, that to me was a stretch at the time. I was like, that's, that's where I want to be uh, $200,000 a year. Okay. And you know, that was, that's what I wrote down on the paper. And then he like tried to like drop the mic and act all cool and walk off. And was like, no, add a zero. And he like walked off and I was like, you're that was lame because I was like, okay, I'm not that unrealistic. Like if I'm stretching and I'm like, okay, 200 grand for me, like that was a big stretch for me already. And then he's like, add another zero. I'm like, to me, that was, it's almost like your subconscious mind knows. Okay. To 10 X your business is probably a, a little bit far fetched. Okay. This year, not saying five years from now, 10 years from now, whatever, but I'm saying, you got to know, like your, your subconscious mind will also know when something is so far out of your reach. It's not even going to attempt it. It's just going to blow it off. It's going to be like white noise. So I don't want you to do that. So you got to be somewhere in the zone of this is scary that I'm going to put this number out there. But at the same time, it, you know, if you hustled, you worked hard and you, you really were consistent, it's Maybe possible. I want you to remember when I first started this business, you know, I'm, I'm, use, I'm using large numbers right now, which make a lot of people feel uncomfortable. Made me feel uncomfortable too. When I first started in this, all I wanted to do was make $200 a month. <laughs> okay. That's it. And then eventually it was like, Oh, I guess I can like, you know, help with all these other things and do all these other things and then not, not have to work. And so it like developed into that, but it baby stepped into that. I didn't like, that was my goal. Initially I was like 200 bucks a month. That's what I want to do. Okay. Think about, um, oh, and the last thing is we all have like this little tiny income lock, right? So this, um, this idea of how much we can make, like say for instance, if a salesperson does break that $50,000 mark, you're like, oh my gosh, you know, just think about whatever job you've had in the past that was the most, the highest earning income that you've ever had. Isn't that kind of where you set the bar now? Think about the president of the United States. How many companies has he bankrupt? And then he just builds them back up to the millions and millions and millions and millions. And then he bankrupts them, but he knows where his set point is. So he always gets back. He always gets back there. So um, I know bringing up president is probably ruffling a lot of feathers right now, but I, I used that example before he was president. I was like, look at Donald Trump. How many times has he filed bankruptcy? He's never like the, the man, he was never down in business. Like he always just kept coming back and then he'd build up another company to the millions and whatever. So it's like, that's his set point, right? So what's your set point? Let's, let's stretch it. So here's the cool thing. I said, sales is all about skill and the skill is learnable. There are seven areas that you can improve your little mini self concepts in each one of these areas. And the better you get in each one of these areas, the stronger you'll be at this. And even though at the core of I, how I want you to feel about how you're sharing things and inviting, 
like how I want you to feel about it. The core of that, I don't want you to feel like you're being a salesperson. Okay. I don't want you to feel like that, but there are ways to get you there. So like before I said, act as if sometimes we have to, we have to, we got to work on these things in order to be better at them, right? If you want to be good at speaking in public, you have to work on it. Even just reading out loud in a class, if you want to be good at that, you have to work at it. If you want to be a faster reader, you have to work at it. If you want to communicate better, you have to work at it. Everything is a skill and skills are learned. So you have the advantage because you're on this call and skills are learned. So here are the key result areas. There are seven. Number one is prospecting. You probably want to write these down. I'm not going to go extensively into each one, but I want you to know that these are the most important areas when it comes to um, sales in general. Okay. Number two is build rapport. So that is if people trust you or not. That's done in so many different ways. Number three is identify needs, not your needs, their needs. The ability to identify needs. Four is presenting. So that's talking about your products, your programs, the business. Five is answer objections. Obviously, if you think, well, if I can answer objections more effectively, would I be better at this? Of course you would. Six is closing the sale, of course. And then seven is resales and referrals. So that's repeat customers. How well, how well do you take care of your customers? You know, there's a statistic out there, I think it's like, Oh, I wish I knew this statistic offhand, but I, we knew this as a company, Powder Blue, um, when I worked for that company. Um, we knew that a returning customer was like this much money as opposed to having to go out and find a new customer, right? It's so much more effort and time to find new customers. But if you have returning customers, people who trust you and they keep coming back to you and they keep asking you questions, that's where you get the bang for your buck, referrals too. And actually, both of those happened to me last week, a referral and of course, you know, return customer, somebody that wanted to come back in. So your self-concept in every single area is gonna determine how well you do in each and every area. In, in, in each and every area. So if you don't feel like you're good at prospecting, what are you going to do? Your subconscious mind will think of everything and anything in order for you to avoid that. If you don't feel like you're great at closing the sale, you're gonna avoid it, you're not gonna do it. You're going to come up with all these other things to do, all these other excuses and reasons, right? So the solution is just master the skill. The better you get, the more confidence you get. The more confidence you have, the higher your self-concept. The higher your self-concept, the better results. The better results, the better you get. And it goes over and over and over, and you just keep doing it. You just keep doing it. So we have to start thinking about how can we eliminate these self-limiting beliefs, right? What I want you to know is that your self-limiting beliefs are not based on fact. Self-limiting beliefs are not based on fact. In fact, they're not real at all. Usually, you know, I had um, one of my, I'll just throw it out there for you. Um, I was, let's see, I was bullied a lot, like in grade school. I was very, very small. And um, so I got, I got, you know, pushed around a lot, bullied a lot. And I remembered in through EMDR therapy, a specific instance where I didn't stick up for myself. And then the, the next memory that came to my mind or it kind of connected with that one was of me pushing another kid down. It was a boy and it was much larger than I was. And I made him cry like bad. So I almost immediately developed this belief that I'm a mean person. And so I like kind of created this little shell that I'm a mean person. And it was just off of these little things. And ultimately, like, I don't want to be a mean person, but I, I created that belief about myself because I made that boy cry when in actuality, he actually assaulted me first and then I stood up for myself. So a lot of times these little tiny beliefs are just running our lives and we don't even realize that they're doing it. I just, I was like, why do I always feel like I'm a mean person? Like I couldn't figure it out. Um, so that's just an example. They're not real. So the cool thing is you can change them and you can rewrite them. Oh yes. Yes. Cam. Oh my gosh. EMDR therapy. Oh my gosh. Yes. Shalene, Shalene does swear by it. And that's why I started it. I was like, I was so reluctant. I didn't want to do it, but I'm so glad I'm still doing it. Or I just went back into it recently. Um, the other thing is positive affirmations. Of course, if you didn't listen to last week's call, please go back and listen to that. It was really great. Positive affirmations are fan freaking tastic. Okay. A couple more things guys. 
I know that this is, this is a lot of intense information, but what I need you to grasp is that we have to, we have to get beyond this whole concept of being afraid to face our fears. Like if we want to have more than what you have right now, you need to think about like, what are the things that you want in your life right now? Okay. Now what are you willing to go and do for those things? What are you willing to do? Because you know what? I didn't want to go to therapy when I had postpartum, but I knew that my kid deserved a kid it deserved a mom that didn't have postpartum and wasn't a freaking basket case all the time. And that's how I felt. Right. I knew that my husband deserved somebody who wasn't like pissed and angry and, and all that stuff. I didn't want to do those things, but I was like, Oh, I have to face this. Right. And it was a fear. And I was like, am I a, like a, a mean person? Is there something wrong with me? Am I going to be locked up in a loopy bin? <laughs> you know what I mean? So we have to do this. We have to start facing our fear, your self-esteem. Your self-esteem, this goes with a lot of positive affirmations, your self-esteem has everything to do with how much you like yourself. Now, one of your positive affirmations, if you don't necessarily know if you like yourself that much, or if you don't necessarily know if other people like you, I want you to look yourself in the mirror every single day and just say, I like myself. I like myself. I like myself. I love my work. I love my work. I like myself. It sounds so freaking cheesy, I know. Trust me, I was like, oh my gosh. I was a cynic on everything. I grew up a cynic, I'm pretty sure. But um, it has so much to do with how much you like yourself. It directly relates to how much money you make. It directly relates to how you dress, your quality of life, friendships, relationships, and your overall happiness has to do with your self-esteem. The more you like yourself, the more others like you, the more um, they're willing to buy from you. So of course, if other people like you, you like them, they like you, they're going to want to be your, your customers and vice versa. They're going to want to do business with you. Who do you want to do business with that you don't like? This is where society has changed. We've become like this faith, they, like every single business. We want a face. We want somebody that we can kind of communicate with and talk to. And we want to know that we trust and like that person. Okay. So that's where we have the edge um, because we're in this type of business. You become what you think about the most. So if you're thinking about success, wealth, happiness, if you're thinking about those things, then you're going to grow into that person. If you're not controlling your inner thoughts, then you are not controlling your destiny. I want you to grasp that. Successful people control their inner dialogues because our subconscious mind gives you actions that are consistent with those thoughts. So every single time you have a negative thought, just like you know Jake shared last week, every single time you have a negative thought, I want you to immediately try to say, no, I am a nice person. I am a loving wife. I am somebody that's worth following. I love other people, okay? Whatever it is, I want you to change it. So, you know, in this type of business, we actually have two, let me check the time, okay. I'll be, I'll be pretty quick on this. Let me just look at it really quick because I don't want to go too far over. There's two things that we have to, two obstacles that we have to overcome. Number one is the fear of failure. And number two is the fear of rejection. Now, believe it or not, the fear of failure, um, everybody experiences this and more than likely your customers experience this and that's why they're not buying from you or the, your prospects are experiencing this because they've had so many failed purchases in the past that they're just reluctant. They don't trust themselves. They don't trust their own judgment. So our number one job, okay, so I want you to, to eliminate your, your whole idea of you failing, okay, because you already know that if you just do the right things, that you will get the same results. If you do the, do the same things that successful people do, you're gonna get successful results, okay? So you can eliminate that from your mind right now. You can still have that fear, but I want you to recognize it and I want you to replace it with a positive affirmation. And then what you're going to do is, I want you to realize like what we're trying to do is to help overcome those objections before those fears even take place in our customers. So you already know that people are going to talk about the time, talk about the money, talk about the sacrifice, but ultimately what it comes down to is their fear of failure again, making another bad decision. So we just have to let them know that we're gonna be there for them. You do the best that you can, but at the end of the day, if you are rejected, right? Because we said fear of rejection, that's really real for us. First and foremost, no that 80% of your interactions will be a rejection, at least. <laughs> Woo! I don't know if that makes you feel good or what, but it does, does let you know that 
<laughs> you you got to do some work on yourself, right? Because you don't want those things to negatively pile up on you because they can. But that's just the name of the game. That's just the name of the game. But if you just keep moving forward, then you're going to be fine. You just, you can't take it personally. Rejection is not personal. Rejection is not personal. Rejection is not personal. They're never rejecting you. They're always rejecting the product, the timing, their own, their own beliefs, whether they can do it or not. Okay. All the top salespeople in the world have reached a point where they no longer fear rejection. I, I faced this, um, you know, for the most part, I would say 95% of the time, I do not feel re fear rejection whatsoever. If it's someone that I super, super respect, then I do, I do have that. Cause I, I like, I have a, or if, I, if they're like a close family member, friend of mine, um, then I do feel that, but you just need to move forward in the face of fear. Courage is just like a muscle and it can get stronger. I want you to know that. So courage is like a muscle. It can get stronger and you will become unafraid. You will become unafraid if you just stick to it. You just have to keep doing. You just have to keep doing. Some will, some won't, so what next? That's a wonderful saying in, in, uh, in marketing in general and sales. But um, honestly, a lot of those, some will, some won't, some what, like I don't, I don't really think so what. I always think like someday, they're gonna come back someday because they usually do. Um, so here's my encouragement for you. 80% of the people in any company, no, I'm sorry, 80%, sorry, let me, let me reframe that. 80% of people that you're talking to take a minimum of five follow-ups, five connections. So here's the sad thing. Less than 10% of anybody that's in sales actually even attempt at five follow-ups. Here's the good thing. Now that you know that statistic, you are always going to follow up with someone at least five times, right? And hopefully you answered yes, because people ask this question about market saturation, how many you know, coaches or oh, oh, that other coach is talking to them. Well, odds are, odds are that other coach isn't following up with them five times, okay? So just outlast most of the competition, I promise you, that is going to be a big one, okay? Nearly half of all sales, Nearly half of all sales attempts never even try to close. So think about your own experience, right? When you're talking to somebody and you, you feel like there's an opportunity for you to close or even like do an invitation right there. How often do you chicken out? And I know how it feels because I've done it a million times too. I want you to know, I'm just going to close with a couple, couple last things. Number one, self-esteem eliminates fear. So we talked about self-concept. We talked about self-esteem. We talked about erasing your limiting beliefs. The higher you can build your, your self-esteem, your self-concept, erasing those limiting beliefs, all of that stuff, the higher you can build that up, the smaller your fear gets. And that's how you feel like if somebody says yes, great. If somebody says no, no biggie, doesn't bother you. And you know what that actually reads in conversations too. People know when you're like not desperate. People know when you are desperate. <laughs> it's like they can smell it. Can't you smell it when somebody's desperate? I can. Um, fear. Oh, yeah. Here's the thing. It's like, you know when you have too much fear because you come up with all these different excuses for not selling. But the higher your self-esteem, the better you sell, the better your income, the better your life is going to be, right? We already talked about it. The higher your self-esteem, the better your quality of life has been proven scientifically over and over and over again. So if you get nothing else out of this call, I just hope that you learn how to increase your self-esteem because that is going to be probably one of the most incredible things that you can do for your life and pass on to your kids and generations to come. I want to leave you with this quote, okay? The primary emotion in sales, success, is enthusiasm. Enthusiasm accounts for 50% or more of all sales. One of the very best definitions of a sale is just simply the transfer of enthusiasm. So emotions are contagious, guys. How enthusiastic are you about what you're doing? The life that you're building, the products that you have, the transformation that you've gotten so far, the transformation of the people on your team. How excited are you right now? I wish I had a couple more minutes um, to read you these last couple things. I'm just going to go for it. And then I'm going to open up for questions. I'm sorry. I really tried to make it 30 minutes. But I think this is, this is like heavy brain stuff. I want you to get it. Look, when you resolve in advance that you will never give up, 
you will be mentally prepared to bounce back from any type of failure that you fear and any rejection. The reason so many people fail in sales is simply because they don't persist long enough. They don't work hard enough to get their first few winning experiences. And once you begin to make your first few winning, winning, once you get, sorry, once you begin to make a first few sales, you feel like a winner and you become more, more motivated to sell even more of your product or your service. But if you don't have those first successful experiences, you can easily lose heart and, and just begin to think that this isn't for you. So that's the difference. It's just that we persist, we persist. So I just wanted to, you know, I want to thank you guys so much there. This is, um, I'm only on chapter two of this. I mean, such great information, but it's also compiled from other stuff that I've other trainings that I've done and life experiences, et cetera. Um, but let me change this to a gallery view and everybody, it looks like everybody's pretty much muted. If you have a question, comment, anything, I'd love to hear from you. If you want to um, raise your hand or unmute yourself, I would love to hear. Hi, Carrie. Okay, so it might be a little personal, but um, how do you like the ED, is it? EMDR experience? How do I like it? Yeah. Well, some days I love it and some days I hate it. So I really hate crying, which maybe I'll address that in EMDR. Um, but I, so it does, it takes you to places that you're just like, oh, that was weird. Um, so it is strange because your brain, it, it basically what it does is it, it, it helps your brain to process information that's been processed incorrectly. Like that whole experience that I had that I translated into I'm a mean person and I lived that with that belief about myself until I'm almost 40. Like I'm going to be 40 in a couple weeks, you know? So now I'll, I can release that. I know that that's not true. So let's see. Um, I missed it. What book is she talking about? I didn't even tell you. I didn't want to tell you because I didn't want you to scare you. It's called The Psychology of Selling by Brian Tracy. <laughs> the Psychology of Selling by Brian Tracy. I didn't want to tell you the title in the beginning because I know people are like, I don't want to be a salesperson. I know, neither do I. But you know what? These little tips and tricks help you so much. I hope. I hope. Just in life in general. Yeah, I have something little. Holly, that was great. Thank you, honey. Courage is a muscle. I love that one. I'm going to like, I'm writing that down and going to share that on my team page. And thank you to those of you on my team that I see. Um, also, I love the five follow-ups. That's surreal. And I heard through another like training call, something along the road. It also takes 12 exposures. So like Facebook post and then Facebook message and then an Instagram post. And then, and it all doesn't have to be our own exposures. So some people think the network is saturated, which kind of helps us <laughs> in a way. So five follow-ups, but it does take somebody like to see a product, to see a service 12 times before they even think about it. Right. And that has to do with a lot with our attention span. I mean, think in just the last 50 years, our attention span went from like 22 minutes and now we're down to like one minute. I know. So, isn't that crazy? I, I, I that's, like that you, not, that's not the real statistic, but it's something like that. It's something crazy like that. Right. And with you saying that, for those of you on the call tonight, we're doing the business presentation on what, the 29th? And our whole goal is to get it cut down short so people will actually watch the whole thing. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I know. I, every time I, I open up a video, I'm like, really? Like, that's where I was like, dang it. I'm running over. I'm running over. I kept checking my time. Okay. We're only 10 minutes over. Not too bad. Yeah. But like what you just said, when we all open up a video, the first thing we look at is how long is this going to take me? Yeah. <laughs> so true. And we're all coaches. So we're like digging it. We're, we're drinking the Kool-Aid. We love it. We're like, yeah, preach on. But if they're a prospect and they, you like barely got them on the, on the call, you know what I mean? They're like, how long do I have to sit here? <laughs> you know, so we're just, we're going to, we're going to get it down. So after, you know, attention span is down to like, I think between around 18 minutes, I think Ellen said she heard on a, on a Ted talk was like that. That's it for like a video presentation. You don't want to go longer than that. So our goal is 15 minutes. We chopped a lot out. And so we're going to, we're going to work for that. Any other questions or comments? Oh, is that a sleepy? Oh, Tiffany, so cute. Oh, so cute. <laughs> Cool. Thank you guys so much for coming on live. I'm so excited. This was my only Wednesday that I could 
you know, present. You saw last week that my kids are seriously nuts. I had to bribe my parents to come over today because hus my husband last minute went off to another meeting. I was like, no, call my parents. You can't go unless you call my parents to come because I'm doing this tonight. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to the 29th. And, um, and that's it, you guys. Thank you. I hope that this serves you. Please share with your team. Share with your team. Love Thank you guys. You. Take Bye. care. Thank Bye. you.